Michael, did I tell you that after my wife met you, she said immediately after, uh, she said, Jordy DeForge is handsome. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's, that's a Star Trek character. And she's like, I know. Yeah, it was unrelated to me. She was actually just yeah. making a statement about yeah. Jordy before. <laughs> um, so whose idea was it to do the tour? Um, because let's be honest, doing a month-long uh, in, uh, road trip that you're doing. Oh, sorry. Yes. Hi, Brandon. Um, a month-long road trip like you guys are uh, jumping out on is not a small feat. We, uh, we initially agreed to a much shorter tour, um, and they, <laughs> they sort of just sprung it on us. And, like, uh, we're, we're happy to Yeah, it sort go. of spiraled into this huge thing, which is sort of funny. Yeah, we, we initially were like, oh, yeah, we all have books coming out at the same time. Let's, like, do... Uh, I just like do a week on the East Coast, just like Montreal, New York, and then now it's like everything, which is sort of funny and cool how it worked out to be this. This uh, like I've I haven't been on the road for this long ever in my life. So. Was it was it one of these things where uh, you didn't where people were so excited about the the three of you cl traveling around that they didn't want to be left out and you'd feel like a jerk not showing up certain stops? Uh, we weren't involved in booking it, so maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When we announced the tour dates, there was a lot of like oh, please come to our city, too. But it was like, oh, man, it's already a month. I so. did a thing where I agreed to do, like, a one-day thing, and then within, within like, six more emails, it became, like, five days. Sure. <laughs> well. So I can see how that can happen. And, and it's cool, and it's, it's exciting to, like, you're, it's like this, because this is your first stop, right? Yeah, yes. this is, like, day two of the yeah. tour. Because I think yeah. afterwards, it would be great to talk to you guys before and after, because I think you'll probably have such a completely cool understanding of your of your fan base or of the people who are excited about your work show fan sure. base is a horrible yeah <laughs> we'll also be like way more tired and cranky yeah, and stuff. yeah. <laughs> Un unshaven and filthy <laughs> and there's there's also the when you spend a significant amount of time with each other oh yeah i'm like i'm gonna hate, <laughs> hate patrick i don't know i can't get michael out of my house anyway so. <laughs> It's going to turn into a heated argument on who's the who's the handsomest. <laughs> Should we pull? Hmm? Yeah. Um. What? <laughs> did you <laughs> did you even bring questions, Robin? <laughs> Why don't we bring the other mic over so I don't have to? Oh God damn it! <laughs> if, when Simon shows up. You guys can share a mic. This is there what you go. guys all came here for, right? This yeah. really professional <laughs> talk. <laughs> um, it's great because we prepared questions thinking of all three of you together, and I really appreciate Simon's attendance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was my sass. No, I'm sure he's somewhere being wonderful. Um, what are some of the things you want to do on the road? And because you're, it's a month, um, but you're not signing every day. Um, Michael and I all, Michael and I also play in a band, and we're playing a couple of gigs along the way. Yeah, That's Creep Highway. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we played last night in Baltimore. Um, at Oslo, yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> he didn't do the entire time in Spain. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, like, when, when we were in Norway, Michael, like, took me to, uh, to a Viking ship museum. It was, it was so cool. It was yeah. a giant Viking ship that they, had, um, that they used to bury Vikings in. Like, they, some, like, Viking god king died, and they were like, let's just put him in this huge ship we have and just send him off. And yeah, that was pretty cool. Like, uh, I had a whole bunch of weird, and then, like, just halves of ships and stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had that horrible in, in Oslo, they, they served this food, which is uh, ground beef served like a hot dog. Oh, yeah, in, and it's in a hot dog bun. <laughs> yeah. It looked real, and they had like, uh, they had pizza there that was, let's just talk about our Oslo awesome trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, you got serenaded on that trip, didn't you? I don't, did I get serenaded on that trip? I, I think, we mean, I got serenaded? No, or? wasn't, didn't Pope sing a song about Michael? No, that was a tea calf at karaoke. Oh, Paul okay. Pope like aggressively sang the doors at me at karaoke, was, <laughs> and like everyone had left, and we were just like the only two people left in this box room. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was a thing that happened to Paul. Pope. Let's just talk about Paul Pope. <laughs> did he did he take it? Yeah, awesome. I want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> 
Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> um, something you guys, um, I guess now that's just the two of you, I will, it, we should probably talk about kind of the collaboration that you guys have, and I'm curious about how um, working together and working around each other has kind of influenced each other's art, because I've heard Michael talk a lot about Patrick in particular, um, <laughs> like biting stuff of his um, in a positive way, like grabbing stuff from his art. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> style stuff. I think we do that back and forth a lot, like even before we hung out all the time, I think it was like just working in the same city and like in the same scene, it was really easy to like snipe things off of each other. And we're both influenced by a lot of the same people, I think. Uh, I think a thing happens too when you're like friends with other artists where um, if you see them doing something uh, that you really admire and respect, that there's like a competitiveness that's like that sort of positive type of competition where like uh, if I know you're producing a certain amount of comics a week, right. I'm just like, oh, I, like I maybe don't want to like match it or beat it, but I like I want to be similarly ambitious or similarly productive, and that happens a lot, mm -hmm. like uh, which I think is good. Yeah. You guys really um, interact very much with with Lost Frontier. Yeah, we like almost exclusively hang out with cartoonists. <laughs> it's funny that people will ask like, "Oh, what's it like being like a part of the Toronto comics community?" But like, it's not like I ever think like, "Oh, I'm gonna go meet up with the Toronto comics community right now." It's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go see like my shithead friends." <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're pretty spoiled for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you ever do work where you're kind of feeling like... Simon! Oh. Yo. Do you find anything good? We've just been talking shit. Alright. What's happening? What have you guys been talking about? Catch <laughs> <laughs> me up. What's been happening? Oh, cool. The patent is beginning to develop. I, uh, I cancelled the Baltimore event last night. It wasn't my fault. The car fell through. The I was cancelling things I tried to say. Why did it fall through? When? When? I can't hear you. You need to <laughs> Sorry to the three in the middle. I should just go home. Um, Brad and I were looking at your guys' work earlier, and one of the things that um, kind of stuck out is all of you have a interest, different, interesting way of kind of abstracting regular life. Like you're not doing straight up um, narratives of you know everyday whateverness. Like there's an element to all your work um, of kind of an oddity in life or an unusualness um, with. With Simon, we have the animals and. Um, the cats are human penises. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about that, my cat. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I was talking to Robin about basically is, is, is sort of to re say the same, the same idea was that when I, in my own work, when I try to do uh, comic books about my life, I only have these, I raise on comic books and cartoons and science fiction, so the tools that I have. I'm just seeing you walking around the dead, just being pounded. 
which is in theory well hung cats. <laughs> it's generally the reality I live in. I don't know about you guys. I mean, Michael does experience a lot of body horror with your black tongue thing. I did have black hairy tongue syndrome. Was it really hair? Yeah, it's like a thin layer of hair. I was a reaction to Pepto Bismol tablets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other people get in reaction to their first cigarette and as an allergic reaction to Listerine. Uh, and to answer your question, I... It's like you staged a horrible thing to happen to you. Sure, just so I could write about it later. Uh, I, uh, I have a hard time writing about things directly. It feels like I can't write about things honestly if I'm actually writing about my life or real people or real things I'm going through. Um, I can write things better if it is like a little bit removed in a piece of fiction, because um, it'll. It, or I mean, it even it forces me to see things from like a third person point of view, or, or like to be a little bit detached about the subjects I'm writing about. Um, and it lets me like a, a lot of things happen where I'll, I'll think a story is about one thing, and then I'll finish it. And I'll read it and be like, oh, this is, it'll be something really obvious. It'll be like, oh, this story about dads is like about my dad. <laughs> but I won't necessarily see it as I'm writing it. But I think that's a good thing that, like, I, I wouldn't be good at writing about things directly. Yeah. I'm just writing a lot of horror all the time. And then later on, I realize that things are about certain things. And, you know, you've been quite a horror, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't write about my life. I don't, like, Obviously not, like my, I have like a science fiction comic. Um, I don't know, if I, if I do try to like draw from my own life, it's mostly just like tone, tonal stuff, just like, a, I don't know, my general like drony life experience rather than like specific instances in my life, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't like being candid like that. I'm really like sort of a private person mostly. Yeah. Oh, all the time. Yeah, I change things all the time that are like too. That if they can be can like perceived as about me, I'm like okay. I wonder if that's telling yeah. in a way of like you know like um, you know like every place in the room has been shot up with that one fan shape. Shape. Or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's stuff that like I haven't put out because, but it's usually not because I think it's too revealing. It'll just be like, this is maybe like, I haven't gotten to that point where it's detached enough yet to be good. Like I haven't gotten to that like objective sort of way of looking at something or seen all, seen all the angles from it. Sure. And I just read the sequel to that, which is amazing. Oh, cool. Good. Has anyone printed yet? No. <laughs> I'm glad you read it, though. I'm glad you got to see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, Michael did this thing called, uh, what was it? College, college Girl by Night. College Girl by Night. About basically a wear college girl. <laughs> yeah, it's um, uh, the first story in it. It's about uh, a guy, a college aged guy who is going to school, like a poor school, and then he. Um, Every full moon, he transforms into a girl, and he goes over to uh, sort of a richer school and uh, sleeps with frat boys there. Um, yeah, but that, that was one where it was a mix of like trying to follow through on this idea I had, but then it was really personal too in a bunch of ways. But um, uh, <laughs> but like in ways that like aren't necessarily obvious. Like, I think like all my comics are very personal, but it, it's not always like a direct, like A equals A thing. Right. Yeah. I saw something like in Gary Uncle of you that talks to me, I really like this. You saying the idea that you um, come up with these really dumb ideas and just kind of hammer them into something. Yeah, I like the idea of like, I mean, our, the comics we've been doing together, like with Mickey, yeah. um, blank comics number one are kind of like trying to commit to the worst premises possible. Like, uh, those are, yeah, those are like maybe the most emotional comics that I make. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, like, the, the one we did like last year was called Butler Comic. Yeah. And like that one was like weirdly emotional. <laughs> and we did Pixar's Cars Comic. Yeah, that oh, one too. Yeah. Are you familiar with a Japanese manga called Selfish Butler? No. no. <laughs> 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 Maybe.
Mickey wanted me to make sure I mentioned that Medicine Comics number one is out at the show. And you can yeah, get off of Mickey so and these the guys. Yeah, it's the first one we've done. It was supposed to come out um, January 1st of this year, but then like Michael was the whole day on up. it. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> he like threw all these comics in the garbage that he made. He made like, how many pages did he make? Like 40? 40, yeah. <laughs> and there's one that's unfinished that was going to go into it, but I wouldn't have finished it for SPX that's 20 pages. Did you really throw comics away? Yeah, I throw a lot of pages you're away. Just, you're, you're just like, <laughs> fuck you, Uncle Omi, I've come after your spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Gun in front. laughs> yeah, it feels good to relinquish stuff like that. Stop working on things that just aren't working. It's great. Li liberating. Yeah, really liberating. Is there a certain like preciousness you've taken, it's taken out of the process? Yeah, but I don't think I was ever very precious about yeah, it. I try not to be. Yeah, I feel like it's like, Talk kind of toxic to be like really precious with your work. Well, you do work on Cintiq, right? Uh, I do all my inking on a Cintiq, yeah. Oh, okay. So you're doing pencils is in those sketchbooks, is yep. the loose ones? Yep. Now, one of the things we're thinking about, um, the, the work where we're looking at everyone's work, um, and maybe more specifically with um, Simon's and Michael's, is um, there's a lot of uh, explore, exploration of kind of sexual identity stuff or not even necessarily sexual identity, but sexuality, and kind of using that as a way to kind of look at things in different ways and right, explore different ideas. The, the, the character's normalcy to it seems like, like, like an ant comic. Like, just having these, these, uh, these gay characters in a society where that's not, like the, the heteronormative in that society is so fucking weird. That sure. It's basically like just a building-sized ant woman that's the queen, and Uh, yeah, well, for that one in particular, I wanted to make everything, there was, like, a lot about the dynamics, like, about everything, uh, how I structured uh, the society in Ant Colony, that, like, I wanted a lot of it to seem alien, and then a lot of it to seem foreign, and the alien things to seem very arbitrary, which is how I feel about a lot of, like, things in real life, like, is just sort of these arbit arbitrary structures and institutions. Simon. <laughs> That all you got for me, Simon? I, I like using porn as a genre. The same reason I started doing horror comics, though, is because like, you're uh, there are things that deal with like really uh, there are genres that deal in extremes. So it's like an interesting way to write about certain emotions or certain ideas. Right, and with both of those. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's also one of those things like working in any genres like this, but there it's very, it's like even more primal where it's like for porn comics you need to have sex for it to be a porn comic and for horror it has to be, have some element of it being scary and then once you fulfill those requirements you can do anything with it, so it's like really kind of freeing in a lot of ways, you get to, it's just like a, it's like a really loose sort of template to, to work with. Maybe well, like more than like more so than like a western or something, you know. Like. Yeah, western you could do anything with it. it; doesn't have to succeed on being. People are never going to be like, "This isn't western enough." <laughs> <laughs> now, all three of you are extremely productive, um, pushing out a lot of comics, and I wonder if there's any ways you're going to be able to try and be productive on the road, or you've just kind of put everything on hold for a month. Simon? <laughs> I, I pretty much had to put everything on hold. I had to cancel my last serial, and I'm just going to do like a really shitty, haphazard tour diary. Well, I, I think we talked about trying to like make some mini comics to get on the road, which yeah. I could do, like yeah. on Greyhound buses to avoid you know, getting decapitated. <laughs> You're not going through Canada. No, no, no. That's where the decapitation yeah, happens. Yeah, if we were on Greyhound buses, I found out, and I'm really scared. And, <laughs> so, I think if we distract ourselves, like, is that how you guys are traveling across the country? Uh, we're planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah. Like all sorts of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, you were saying earlier, the whole food is just going, but you have to keep on working when it makes you time the entire tour. Yeah, I was hoping to get the month off, but I'm working full time. So mm -hmm. it'll
It'll be weird. My plan is to try and take over like, while Michael's asleep while Julia's not coming. <laughs> so the upcoming season of Adventure Time, Maeve will just be standing silently in the background of all the scenes. Like, what could you do that they wouldn't run? Um, I, I put my, I, I ordered an episode recently and I put myself in the background. I did, I did that. I've got a monster that's like stuck with a, uh, its tail is shot with a giant arrow and it's stuck continuously trying to walk forward and I just stood myself and I'm like, are they gonna change me? <laughs> I'm gonna be the guy drawing that in like a month or two. <laughs> 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 you dare take that out. <laughs> oh, also, I put the word Bozak in there. All right, I don't know if uh, that might be for That's the background like artist. slang for testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> I was asking earlier, is there anything particular that they want to do in the tour? Is there anything you want to do in the tour in America, Simon? Not get tapped, decapitated on the Greyhound bus. Not get shot, not get mugged. Um, don't, don't fly too close to the sun, anyway. Yeah, I, mean, I want to attempt to control my behavior and be a, a, a sassy young professional. And, uh, <laughs> I want to conduct myself in a professional capacity. I want to see how that goes. Is this your first time in the Americas? Uh, if you've done your research, Brandon, you would know that uh, this is my third trip to America. I was a special guest at Comic Arts Brooklyn last year and uh, also did some traveling in 2009. <laughs> Ever. I'm mad at you, Simon. Are, <laughs> are we live right now? Are we on the air? I, I don't think it's being uh, streamed anywhere, so that's probably a good thing. We this is being streamed through the whole convention hall of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> to us right now. Jules Pfeiffer's is watching this and shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, it's weird you do all those recordings in a marsh with all those crickets. <laughs> Are there any professionals in the audience? <laughs> it's like meeting a doctor. Is there an interviewer in the house? <laughs> yes, Brandon, you're one of them. <laughs> that's, that's hey. I was watching you draw last year, and you did really interesting when you draw because you don't draw freehand. You use that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did for th I did for that drawing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have this little French curve thing, and it's it's not a, it's not a French curve. I do use. Uh, did, were you done? Sorry, I'm, I think I'm like interrupting you. Yeah. I, I do I drew I do draw freehand like I'm oh. doing I'm doing it right now, <laughs> but um I, I do I use that thing for a while just because I wanted to change the way I draw. Uh, and I felt like my drawings were like, like previous, prior to Distance Mover, all my drawings were like really, ch uh, really chunky and like uh, with like a brush. Um, and I wanted to draw like a little more like, I wanted to draw straight lines and like be really like rigid and stuff. So I, I had this little, it's like a little like um, earring holder or something that my girlfriend gave me. And uh, I just used it as a, like it was like an interesting shape. So I used it as a, a ruler, a guide. For a long time, for a long time, I couldn't draw without it. I always had it, like in my hand. And a lot of the book Distance Mover, you can actually like see this shape throughout it. Like if you see the, um, like the physical plastic thing, and then like look through the book, you can find it in there. Um, oh, um, like Mark Mel, uh, Mark yeah. Bell, Matt Brinkman, Mark Bayer. Yeah, those are big ones. Mm -hmm. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, those oh, are like the weird. top three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep, yeah. Meg? Oh, I mean, they're, they're 
huge in Australia. Um, and I, I quickly found out once I got you know, popular -ish in America that nobody knew of these children's books. Yeah, uh, generally, but you're the only person. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, it's from the 70s, it's a British children's book series called Megan Mark, but only with one G on Megan Mark. Uh, Jan Piankowski, he's a British Polish illustrator, he's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's very simple, it's just, you know, nothing much happens in them, they're like, you know, early reading books. But I grew up on them and used to like draw them in like high school and stuff, like weird stuttering doodles that go in that style. And uh, yeah, Megan Mark just happened accidentally. I moved to the UK in 2008 and just started drawing Megan Mark as a fun diversion, not really thinking about what I was doing. But the interesting thing is that I was living in Richmond upon Thames, which is where young Pink Kowski lived for a long time and worked on Megan Mark kids' books. So, yeah, I feel like there was some sort of uh, magic in there. They all faithfully came together. So, there's a lot of magic in my work. I believe in magic. <laughs> um, children's books is an influence on you too, right, Michael? Or? Uh, yeah, I used to have a, uh, I sort of called it, but um, I used to collect a lot of children's books, and there, there are a few illustrators, um, Mary Blair uh, in particular, who have been uh, big influences on me. Is there something particular with like their type of work, doing stuff for kids? Uh, no, I think it's, visual? I think it's like more, I mean, some of those books are great, uh, like they're fantastic books, but a lot of it was just, I just liked the, uh, the uh, illustration style or, or the design of them. Were they things you looked at when you were kids, or? A lot of the stuff I liked as a kid, like, uh, doesn't resonate with me as much now. Um, I just, I go to used bookstores a lot and spend a lot of money and hoard things and, and discover things that, yeah, I, I ne was never exposed to when I was, when I was actually a kid. How about you, Patrick? I can't really think of anything that um, I read, any, any kids' books that I read that really I feel like are still influencing me, I guess. I read the, um, the Beano a lot, this like British comic that was that, like, uh, it was like a weekly comic that had a whole lot of different comic strips in it and my grandma sent it to me every week. I think we talked about it like when I was on. That's one with the weird British Dennis the Menace. Yeah, that's like, they, those, the two Dennis the Menaces were created like within a week of each other and there's no, I don't think there's any evidence as to which one came first. Yeah, I have the pin on my bag, Dennis the Menace fan club. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> People are always commenting on it, and I don't think they realize. They're like, oh, he looks kind of off-model there. It's like, no, this is the British one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I read that as a kid. Yeah, I really like Richard Scary as well. I just want to give a shout-out to Richard <laughs> <laughs> If you're in the audience, Richard, like, <laughs> There's a bunch of people have their hands up, so go up, up front there. Um, oh. um, yeah, so you mentioned um, that you'd like to interview them after, like it would be nice to interview them after their tour, so that you can just ask them like, what was it like interview, uh, interacting with all those bands? Right. So a question to all of us there, has, have you ever had an interaction with a band who comes to you with a perspective on your own comics that really stuck with you? That you're like, oh, I didn't, I never even thought of it that way. Uh, that is cool. <laughs> 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 uh, I've had a lot of like uh, since I did a book called Ant Colony. I've had a lot of entomologists just like talk to me about stuff. But Are I don't they know trying to correct you on anything? No, or? I mean that would be weird. I would, be really, um, <laughs> but um, I don't know if they've like made me look at my own work differently, but they've made me look at actual ants differently. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Yeah, they're like, look, look what they do. They're not. Fucking like that. Um, 
<laughs> but they, I got invited to like an entomology conference and I had to turn it down because it conflicted with like a, a comic con. And I sort of thought like I should hedge my bets and go with like the audience that I dan <laughs> dance with, dance with the girl that brought you there. What's the term? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's all. You got to get that. Uh, Jim Davis has that J the Jim Davis ponytail, where he said in an interview he keeps his ponytail even though he's balding at the front because. Uh, he has a pony. He says, he says it's to remind him that he's still an artist. <laughs> and he, he said it like totally unironically. It was like the saddest, the saddest thing I've ever read. <laughs> he's cool, man. He created Garfield. Give him a break. <laughs> Right there, the glasses. I'm 27. <laughs> I, I look 25, but I'm actually 32. Sure. I look 34, <laughs> and I'm 16. How old are you, Patrick? 40? 40? I'm 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, I feel pretty worn down all the time. Like, uh, I, I realize, like, I hit, like, I, I'm never going to be as productive as I was when I was 24, which isn't that bad, because I'm still pretty productive. But, like, I'm only getting slower, and I'm, like, Tired. I've sort of like that's fucked up weird, a lot of things weird to thing do this. To, to like have in your head already. Yeah. It's like, oh well, it's only gonna get worse from here. <laughs> it's like, it's fine. I t I try to take advantage of like having the energy to do things I and. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was a really flattering article. It but yeah. I mean, <laughs> I might, I might already be on the decline. Like I don't know. Yeah. You don't, you don't know till you hit the bottom what the what the shape of it is. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, like my, my favorite my favorite living cartoonist is Gilbert Hernandez, mm -hmm. who's uh, I think has gotten really better. Nice. I mean, <laughs> I love them both, but I I'm, if I had to if I had to pick one, if both were about to drown. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but like Gil, Gil, I mean, but both are good examples. Both are good examples of like. <laughs> are you saying which kid would I save is like the better cartoonist? Uh, but I guess I guess still. Here's the thing. Wait. Sure. But. This is what's happening <laughs> after after There's your a wedding hot tonight. Tub and a pool, isn't there? <laughs> is there a big tank of water? <laughs> yeah, the pool. <laughs> it's called something else. Yeah. All right, anyone else? Uh, Michael what was the Norwegian pizza like? Oh, yo, yeah, okay. There was this, it was like, I didn't try it. Someone else tried it, and then I saw a photo of it, and it was like, it was like a pizza dough, and then it looked like a brown sauce, and it was described as kind of like a gravy. And then, and then like little like cut up bits of hot dog or something. I just they didn't look like pepperoni or sausage. It was just like cut up hot dog. Well, it's also important to note that like that was the most expensive city I've ever been in my entire life. Yeah, and it was like a thirty dollar pizza. pizza. Fucking with you. <laughs> like this is like a sixty dollar dinner, and it's uh, it's Cheerios that we licked everything. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, back there you had your hand up. Or oh, the gentleman at the front who right there? Robin can't see. Uh, this yeah. Is for, uh, Simon, I heard like you. <laughs> I heard uh, you painted with some like really unconventional material, like food dyes and stuff before. Yes, I used food coloring a lot. All my pinks and yellows, owls, beak, and legs, all food coloring. And it's gone off, it stinks. And I like to think that's how owls and owls do the woods. <laughs> Yeah, I used to make my room like ink out of my urine and uh, boot polish and stuff for a while. I was in prison for a while in the 90s, so I don't want to go into it really. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, <laughs> <poor Andy. laughs> yeah, I like my food coloring and, uh, and mostly it's gouache and watercolor. And, and thanks for asking a question that wasn't about pizza. <laughs> Does anyone have any pizza questions? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wrote a pilot. I think it was like, um, I'm not trying to freak you out. 
Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I wrote a pilot where I changed all the names, and Mark was called Michael, and Al was Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. But I can't change the names at this point. That was like a few years ago before I like, blew up on Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to get into some Tumblr questions, right? Uh, well, I guess the relationship with Tumblr and how that's affected your career, because I know it's interesting for me because like Michael destroyed his Tumblr. I just I just closed it. I didn't like. Okay. What <laughs> 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 a shot of you. It like, wasn't like eating a, up your you went you went to like their server. They're yeah, like no. master server. The cords. <laughs> That's the only way to delete your account. No. I started a Twitter account a couple of weeks ago, and then I was really off Tumblr. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Twitter's where the real party's at. Yeah, it's right? all happening on Twitter. The following yeah. on Twitter at s underscore k underscore s one for all sorts of. <laughs> uh, I'm getting pretty tweety on there. <laughs> yeah, Tumblr's good, been good for me. It made my career. I, I, I couldn't make money selling mini comics and trying to ship them to the US because there's no industry in Australia and it's a very limited pool of stuff. So I was trying to get stuff to the US, but no. And then I put it on Tumblr, and then like a, a bidding war erupted between all of the major publishers for the nuts. <laughs> and I'm the only one. The and, and rip out the chorus. I didn't, um, I think it was like indulging all my worst narcissistic whatever. Like uh, I didn't like being able to check how many notes something had uh, in comparison to something else I drew. And then the big, and then um, also I didn't like the way it presented my work. Uh, it felt like uh, uh, I like it, like I have like a WordPress or whatever, like a blog. And uh, I like having my work just like surrounded just by white space, um, rather than if someone sees it, uh, it's like competing for attention with like a RuPaul gif and like <laughs> an essay about like. You'll you'll never win. Win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's like I I like all. <laughs> yeah, like I like I love all that stuff, but it just felt weird. Like, yeah, or like an essay about Firefly or something, and it's like I don't want. I just like I want it to be like if someone reads my comics, it's like just there on this page. Yeah, it's it's I even how frivolous everything I joked on with my own The scroll is just so weird. Like there's no context to anything and there's no like weight to anything. And it's like it's I think it's like cool other people are obviously most people are able to look at it and like make those judgments uh, intuitively, but I just like I preferred my work just as a separate thing. And um the other big thing is like I couldn't bring myself to close uh turn off the anonymous questions. Which were amazing. But I was getting weird ones, and then I had to like, I was like, if I can't close it off, I, maybe I should just like get rid of Tumblr or something. Yeah. I don't want to, I had like, a, like some weird abusive ones and a lot of like sexual ones, and I just felt I uncomfortable. You were answering some of those though. Yeah, but see, I answered like the ones that were like not crazy. But some of those were like, like what is it when people were like, I fucking hate you and you can't draw and you just be like, thanks for asking, I right. need a number two sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I assume it was like the weird ones were all from like one guy or something, but and then I got a few that were like, "Hey, did I see you at this bar?" And I was like, "It would have been a bar that I was at," and then that also made me a little weird. I used to, I used to send you some weird ones. That was it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, so, I'm so used to like I have a stupid tattoo on my neck, and I hang out at one comic store all the time. So I'm so used to people like like being like, "Hey, I saw you at the one place you're always at." Oh right. Really? <laughs> Uh, we're running near to the end of time. Do we have any more questions from folks? Yep, with the long hair. Uh, Patrick, um, in your new comics four, the first story, I would say, like, rides the line of what could be considered a comic. 
sure. Yeah. Uh, like the the images in that are like completely unrelated. I didn't I didn't try at all. I wrote this like prosy story this one morning, and I wanted to pu publish it somewhere. So then I just like did a bunch of drawings to go with it. Um, and then it's like okay, it's a comic now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm redefining comics. <laughs> No, they don't at all. They're just like squiggles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have f some fine art for sale as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the honesty of that, though. Yeah. Do you want to auction off the drawings you've been doing on the table? Here? Yeah, I got this vegan sticker as well. Pretty sure you're made of meat. Anyone else? Yep. Um, now, that, now that you're all here, I feel like it's, it's about time that once and for all you establish which one of you is the cutest. Oh. <laughs> I, I love Michael. He's got beautiful lips and beautiful eyes and really well manicured facial hair. Mine's very patchy and spotty when I don't shave it off, but I think Michael's a very handsome man. <laughs> Yeah. But but yeah. handsome or cute? I mean, if we're going for the cute, I'm gonna well, go for Patrick. Mm, he does have a boyish charm to him. <laughs> and also a strength. And there's that silence. He's a strong silence. <laughs> so you can kind of apply your own kind of things on him and imagine what you want him to be. <laughs> and I think of him as like a steep and queen sauce. So. <laughs> I don't like to think of people based on their visual, like, appearance. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>